What you guys got another video here for you. So you've bought yourself a Ryzen third gen CPU and it's running hot. You've got yourself your Wraith Prism processor. I purchased the 3800X and it come with this Wraith Prism uh, RGB cooler. Now the RGB cooler here is not a bad cooler especially when it was calling the Ryzen 2700X. It makes me wonder what they did to this cooler for the latest generation processors and they never did anything. As you can see here, the idle temps for the Ryzen 2700X is 42 Celsius. When we run Prime 95, it gets up to around about 59 Celsius, as you can see here, and it will go up and down and that's its maximum temps. And of course, the uh, CPU cooler is running at full tilt now this has not been overclocked these are uh, default uh, settings no overclocks at all here but as you can see it seemed to manage to cool the processor down pretty well without getting up into the 80s like the ryzen third gens seem to be doing they getting into 85 and 86 uh, celsius territory which is pretty toasty now on the amd website they will actually saying that the chips can go up to about 95 celsius so it's a bit concerning when you're seeing a chip that you've paid a lot of money for that's getting into the 85s and it's pretty common uh, there's been a bit of a discussion about the sensors how it how they work and how these programs are not quite uh, true when they're showing uh, the temps you can see here i'm just rendering a video on this ryzen 3800x and you can see it's coming in at around about 82 celsius which is pretty toasty and this is just running camtasia and doing a screen capture and rendering that video out now this is exactly as it comes out of the box all i've done is put the cooler onto the system and i've gone in and basically done no tweaking whatsoever the fan on the other hand for the processor is running at full tilt you can see it's now gone up to 83 celsius there and of course the fan is really noisy because now it's spinning at full speed uh, which is quite a fast speed. It's running at about 2,800 or 2,900 revs per minute, which is quite high, which makes it sound like an airport inside your house. So if you don't mind the noise from these little coolers, uh, maybe back then when it was a 2700, this thing was doing okay, but I just don't think it was good enough for the 3800X uh, and also the 3700X. I just don't think it was meant for those CPUs. So I went with the... Now I installed the Scythe Fuma 2 uh, inside this machine and uh, this has got the Ryzen 3800X in it and it's the same for the 3700X you could use this cooler and you can see here it fits lovely with high profile memory if you want to see the installation and all that sort of jazz you can look at one of the cards at the top of the screen and you should be able to see it now someone in the comments section mentioned that if I overclock the CPU to 4.2 gigahertz on all cores and change the voltage to 1.3 or 1.35 then you should see a much stable uh, temperatures so that's what I did I went into the BIOS and you can see here I've already got the voltage done and I'm also changed some settings here so let me just quickly show you I've already upped the uh, processing speed to 4.2 gigahertz because what I found is uh, the temps were so erratic that they were going all over the place so I wanted to get those temps down so someone suggested to overclock to 4.2 gigahertz and undervolt the CPU. Now I tried undervolting the CPU without doing the overclock and it absolutely killed my benchmark score. So what I did was um, I overclocked it to 4.2 like the guy um, says. So I enabled the overclock tuner. I also turned off precision boost overdrive. I turned that off and put it to none. And I also give it a 1.35 uh, voltage and I put that in manually. You need to uh, put the overclock tuner on to. Now, what's really weird is that you are overclocking the CPU to 4.2 and then also undervolting because obviously the stock volts are pretty high on these Ryzen third gen processors. So what I did was I went in and followed what he said just to see uh, whether it was uh, viable, whether I could do it, and I'm not going to sort of take a big impact on my uh, benchmark scores because when I undervolted it and I didn't do any of that stuff I took a massive hit on the overall performance of the process and I didn't want to do that so what I have done is I've done what he said and put 1.35 volts on it 
And of course, lo and behold, when I booted up, it was quite nice. I was getting a really stable um, temperatures. They were sort of not jumping around as much. The idle temps dropped down quite a bit. And I also had the overall temperatures drop down to around about 20 Celsius with this cooler. So as you can see here, I've now got the 1.35 volts on it. It's set to offset mode here, but I did go in there and put manual and put it to 1.35 uh, on there. So it's that's what it's gonna stick to. I didn't do the 1.30, I just did 1.35 and that's how I set it. So let's go ahead and what I'll do is I'll save these settings and I'll get back to the desktop and I'll run a benchmark so you can see it and you'll be able to see the results with this cooler. So if you're trying to run this CPU, so the 3800X or the 3700X with the Wraith Prism cooler as default, then you'll probably find that the temps are gonna get a little bit toasty. And, uh, and that's exactly what happens. So let me just quickly show you here uh, what the temps are here. Now remember, this is with the 4.2 uh, overclock and uh, also with that new cooler on there. And you can see idle temps now are 40 to 41, which is absolutely uh, awesome because the previous temps were absolutely ridiculous they were jumping all over the place up to 50s and 60s and then back down to 50s it was just really erratic you can see here we've got a nice stable overclock here the cpu package is 40 celsius and it sort of goes up and down to 41 to 40 and sometimes goes into the 30s now also another thing to mention is it's uh, running its v core and you can see here 1.3 uh, volts around that sort of ballpark figure and another thing to point out here is the quietness of the system with the Wraith Prism it's absolutely noisy running at full speed at something like 3000 revs per minute whereas this thing's running at 1200 revs per minute and the quietness of this cooler is absolutely awesome it really is now when I had the Wraith Prism on and I was doing any sort of work in the background you could hear it revving up and down and of course, when I'm recording videos, it was getting picked up uh, with the loud sounds of the cooler. Now run Cinebench here, and this is basically the scores I was getting on stock with the uh, Rave Prism. You was getting 3,992, and it was very noisy, and the temps were all over the place. Now with this cooler, I've getting pretty a good score, 4,714, which is pretty nice. I'll run the benchmark here just so you can see it. Now, a friend of mine bought the same motherboard and the 3800X, the same um, a processor as well, and he'd done the same thing, which I told him to do, and uh, he has got the Wraith Prism. He says it's quite noisy, and he is actually going to change it out with the same cooler that I've got. And, of course, when he did these overclock and he did the same thing, he was getting over 5,000 points. And also, he was actually uh, getting higher temps because he had the Wraith Prism cooler on there, and he says it was noisy, and he wanted to change it. So... Everyone who has got one of these processors are moaning about the high temps, and this is the reason why, because it's so erratic. You can see it's so stable now, 70 Celsius there, uh, which is very stable. Now, if you had the Wraith Prism and you didn't have the overclock on, this would be jumping all over the place and probably getting into the 80s. And that's something that I wasn't quite happy with. And I think, to be honest, when I've watched a few YouTube channels from some of the big YouTubers out there, they wasn't being quite clear about the temperatures they were just really pimping the whole uh, ryzen third gen processor and wasn't actually talking about the temps and there is problems with the temperatures i've seen so many people on the internet posting up uh, ryzen third gens running super hot um, really hot and stuff like that and it's in the 80s and that's what i'm seeing 85 86 and of course uh, my friend's got the same processor and the same other one he's getting the same problems so i'm just going to run prime 95 here now, AMD say this is quite normal, uh, these types of uh, temperatures for this processor, but I don't like to be 10 Celsius uh, below their maximum threshold, which is 95. So I don't really want that. I would rather get it down a little bit more, and that's exactly what I've done. So it's away with the RGB Wraith Prism, and I've now got the Fuma 2. Now, if RGB is your thing, the Wraith Prism does have RGB, but it doesn't cool the CPU good enough, in my personal opinion. It was okay for the 2700X, but it's no good for the 3800X or the 3700X. You can see we've maxed out the CPU here with our Fuma 2 cooler on and with that little overclock going, and you can see we're now getting 60 Celsius. And that's pretty good because compared to having the Wraith Prism uh, with no overclock, 
we was getting very erratic um, temps and it was going into the 85s, 84s and stuff like that, which is way too hot in my personal opinion. So I'm just going to show you these temps down here as well because they're a different piece of software just so you can see the same results are with two different bits of software. Some people sort of complained and said that that um, temps are not reliable enough. So I've used two different bits of software to show you. Now also you can see uh, the CPU um, revs per minute here, which is the fans. It means it's running a lot quieter compared to the Wraith Prism. Now whether you're running the third gen processors like the Ryzen 3700X or 3800X and you're getting the super high temperatures uh, like in the 80s, you can see here by using this method you're going to get much uh, better temps, uh, much more stable temps. They're not erratic. They're not jumping all over the place. You're getting steady uh, 40s uh, idle and you're also getting 60 under Prime 95, which is pretty good compared to the Wraith Prism, as you can see here. Now, another plus side is obviously having it running a lot quieter because the fans are only spinning at maximum speed of 1200 revs per minute. What you're getting is a quieter PC compared to the Wraith Prism, which sounds like it's in some sort of EFRO airport. Now, I wanted to do a test with the rendering of the video just to show you here the temperatures we were getting when we're rendering a video with the Fuma 2 cooler on. And you can see here already it's a lot more stable, 59 Celsius to 60 Celsius around that sort of ballpark figure, which isn't bad compared to in the 80s with the Wraith Prism cooler. So I think you agree the Fuma 2 has done a pretty good job at cooling that CPU and keeping the temperatures stable. Anyway, I hope this one helps you out. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I'll leave the links in the video description if you're interested in this cooler. I'm pretty sure you will be when you see those temps. I shall see you again for another video tomorrow. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.